the greatest understanding you can have is that you don't understand. And spending your life and your energy and your relationships on trying to always be understood and have someone else agree with you and understand you is one sure way to make sure that you're going to be a victim for the duration of that relationship. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to uh, allow yourself to be in a position where someone else is demanding to be understood by you. There's some things that are very simple, some very simple little clues that I use in my own life and in, uh, in pulling your own strings that I'd like to share here with you. Um, under the heading of being quietly effective and knowing you're never going to be understood. First is that shrugging is a virtue. If you could just learn the art of the shrug, I like Ayn Rand's uh, title, uh, Atlas Shrugged, Atlas holding up the whole world and just shrugs. And the whole idea of uh, of not having to be in a position to uh, to to defend yourself or to be understood or somebody's demanding something from you and where you could just sort of shrug your shoulders and say, well, I don't understand. I just don't understand, and that's okay. My wife and I do this to each other all the time. I mean, she behaves, she does the, the craziest things in the world, and vice versa. I mean, she thinks what I do is crazy, too. I mean, she uh, believes in what she's doing and believes that that's the way a house has to be run, for example. Um, she makes the beds first thing in the morning. I mean, that to her is uh, it's just her way. I have lived under the philosophy that it's not any healthier psychologically to get into a made bed than it is to get into an unmade bed. But she makes the bed. I don't understand somebody getting out of bed in the morning and making the bed. But I don't have to understand. It's not necessary for me to understand. I don't have to get into a you're wrong and I'm right attitude toward it. It's just a simple shrug. If you want to make the bed, that's terrific. I'll even help you if you want to. Just let it go. You don't have to. I don't have to understand that. And you know something? Life is full of those little things. Everywhere you go, you're going to encounter people who do things their own way. And that's really what makes the world go around, that uniqueness, that specialness in people. So if you just shrug at it and stop telling yourself that I have to be right and I have to make somebody else wrong in all of my interactions with them, just shrug. Just shrug. Quietly shrug your shoulders and say, they have a right. They're on their own path. They have a right to do what they want to do. And you don't have to be understood. And when you get into that, that, uh, that mindset of not needing to be understood all the time, then you're not going to be explaining yourself and having somebody else explain themselves to you over and over again endlessly. Being offended is a, is a choice of to be a victim. Did you, you ever think how silly it is to go around being offended? There are people who turn on the radio and they hear somebody speaking in a certain tone or saying a word that they don't like, and they, they have a whole vocabulary of words that they're offended by. And if somebody says one of them, right away they go off into a dither. Well, it's just like letting somebody else's behavior decide how you're going to be emotionally. I mean, you can be the kind of person who goes down the street and your emotions are being pulled by everybody else, your strings are being yanked by everybody else in the street, depending on what, what words they choose, what symbols come out of their mouth. This person says hell, that one says damn, this one says uh-oh, this one says caca, that one says poo-poo, this one says wee-wee, whatever it may be, and you're offended, uh, or whatever synonyms you want to use for all of those functions. Uh, for what? what what's, it's like allowing yourself the right to process somebody else's behavior for what it is. It's their behavior. It's not yours. If you don't like what somebody is saying on the radio, tune the dial someplace else. If you don't like the way somebody else is dressing, turn your eyes someplace else. Don't feast your eyes on it. If someone else wants to hear rock music that you, uh, you think is uh, disgusting, then don't listen to it. That's what this whole thing is about. That's what the First Amendment to the Constitution is about. That's what free speech is about. That's what free expression of as a human being is about. That there's no code that is going to fit everyone. And, and choosing not to be offended is to choose not to be a victim. People speak the way they speak. I don't like some of the language that I see in the films. I don't let my children go and, and see some of the films. I don't like the violence that is on the screen. Rather than being offended by it and going, being all upset about it and getting myself worked up and being a victim to the people who choose to display violence on the screens, I simply don't go to those movies. I don't have anything to do with them. And, and I don't miss them. And I, and I, and I, I happen to believe that it's part of the gratuitous violence that we find throughout the culture. But I'm doing what I can to eliminate that. But being offended by it, being upset by it, it's as silly as being offended by starvation. Starvation is a part of what the universe is about. And so is my desire to change it and to improve it. 
That's just as important. And that's what I go with. I go with what I'm for rather than what I'm against. Everything that you're against weakens you. Everything that you're for empowers you. So the question is, do you want to be empowered or do you want to be weakened? Everything you fight, you'll be weaker for the effort. Everything that you're for will empower you. When they asked Mother Teresa if she would uh, march against the war in Vietnam in 1967, she said, no, I won't. She said, but if you have a march for peace, I'll be there.